Welcome to another episode of Composing Visual Music. Uh, this time we're going to uh, do something more auditory than visual, uh, but we're still going to use um, um, jitter to manipulate sounds. Uh, and uh, we're going to use that in combination with uh, the Bach library, as well it's, uh, as its um, a cousin, the Cage library. And, uh, and use spectra, interpolate spectra, uh, and then produce resonant models based on that. <laughs> So um, those spectra that I just uh, saw in Max, I uh, extracted from uh, a Spear, using Spear, and saving uh, the analysis. So we select the sound, uh, we open it, and then uh, we save it as, uh, this time, as the uh, one TRC, one track, resample frame. Um, so uh, in uh, tutorial two, I used actually a different format to do a similar thing and the visualization of the spectra, uh, spectrum using uh, text uh, format. This time I'm gonna use the more common SDIF file. So I see here the spectrum of the double bass as well as the flute. And in both cases, these are pitched sounds, so I can see the harmonic distribution of the loudest partials. In order to manipulate SDIF files, the ones that I create in uh, Spear, I, I can use different objects, and a good um, repository for this kind of objects is the, is the CINMAT. Uh, the SINMAT um, package. This package contains the SDIF buffer object, uh, which loads the SDIF files, and then that can be played via the SDIF tuples objects that can be fed into the sinusoids object. So that just pretty much plays back the data contained in the, in the SDIF files. The trumpet sound. So this is all good and uh, can be useful for many reasons, but uh, today I want to see uh, how to um, take it uh, to a different place and start manipulating the uh, spectra using the Bach library and the Cage library, which are related, developed by the same people uh, with the same uh, sort of uh, syntax. So I can load uh, the spectra into uh, a, a Bach roll object. So what a Bach roll object is, is pretty much a score, uh, which is much more versatile and in my opinion, useful than the end slider, which is uh, pretty much the only object that uh, comes with Max, which allows for uh, score, um, handling of events. Here I can create events, uh, different uh, durations and uh, change the keys. There are infinite possibilities in the, with this you know, kinds of uh, objects and the Bach library in general. And I encourage you to look into all of these possibilities uh, using the Annotation Help Center, which um, explains everything. I will uh, We'll say that uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve to um, to uh, really understand how the Bach library works. And as an historical note, uh, the Bach library actually is developed uh, to um, emulate the open music software, uh, which is a software developed at IRCAM in Paris for uh, computer-aided composition. 
and it's based on the language uh, Lisp, uh, Lisp processing. So I will talk about uh, the um, Bach library more as we um, keep uh, recording this, as I keep recording these um, uh, tutorials. And but for now, uh, we'll just move on with uh, manipulation of the spectra. And to do that, we can uh, load the spectra into this back row uh, using a combination of the read as diff file, uh, the back object read as diff, and the uh, cage as diff p track, which stands for partial track, to row, to back row. So this will just output whatever is contained in the SD files that I'm loading uh, into a back row, which makes it uh, nice uh, as a nice way of visualizing uh, the spectra into a score notation. What I want to do is interpolate between these two uh, sounds. This is the uh, double bass, which I'm going to dump into the uh, row interpolation object in the cage library. And then I'm going to dump the uh, flute sound that I just loaded. And then what I'm going to do is um, um, create an interpolated version between the two. So halfway in between at 0 0.5, this is what the sound is like. Since I don't want to use the easy synth object. Uh, which, by the way, is um, um, is being fed by the uh, next to the last output of the back roll, which is the play out, out uh, outlet, uh, to do something a little different. I um, I'm gonna use this object, which is uh, also uh, uh, designed by the Cinemat uh, Labs at UC Berkeley, and um, uh, what this object uh, does is um, it takes a, a triples of frequency gain and decay rate and um, it pr produces a resonant uh, model uh, that can be triggered in two different ways. So if I load the model first and then send an impulse of, of amplitude 0 0.5, I will have the uh, impulse uh, uh, reproducing this resonance mo resonant model. If I uh, load another one, something different. Uh, another way of going is to uh, just uh, feeding the resonators with a signal, uh, usually a noise signal, which has to be amplified by quite a bit, as I see here. create a resonance based on the noise filtered by subtractively by the resonant model. To play back the interpolated version of the two spectra I'm going to use then the resonators object uh, but to do that I need to um, uh, use the data that I get from the back roll which are um, which is the um, pitch of the different um, uh, partials and the uh, uh, duration as well as the amplitude and I have to extract the decay rate uh, in order to feed the resonators with the triples that I just talked about. Um, to do that I'm going to actually convert the back roll into a matrix and uh, I, I want to uh, then mm, uh, use one of the abstractions that I've created for this purpose. Since in my work I do a lot of uh, going back and forth between uh, Bach library and Jitter, I created a set of uh, tools that uh, simplify these operations. And all of these tools will be available on uh, GitHub for download. Um, of course, any feedback on these uh, tools uh, and will be uh, more than welcome. Uh, so the maybe the most important tool that I'm using here is the Bach roll to mat object, uh, which is um, if I uh, dump uh, the Bach roll, uh, which has to be a one voice Bach roll, uh, into this object, I get a three plane mat matrix, 
uh, which are distributed based on the chords onsets from uh, back roll to matrix object, I get uh, the um, frequency, the uh, the length of the uh, of the partial in uh, in milliseconds, and then the amplitude. Uh, poking around the uh, um, the the max forum, I found the formula that it's used to uh, calculate the amplitude based on a resonant uh, model. The amplitude at time t uh, based on the decay rate uh, and the initial amplitude. If I resolve this formula uh, for the uh, decay rate, then I get um, a way of calculating the decay rate based on the elements that I have. With this formula, after checking whether uh, the duration is uh, different than zero and the amplitude is different than zero, this condition is important because um, otherwise I might get divisions by zero, which we know is not good. So uh, after this, I can get the mm, an output of frequency, amplitude, and decay. <laughs> this was helpful uh, and let me know if you have questions uh, and I will post the uh, links to download the uh, dispatch uh, as well as the tools contained in it um, on github on the in the description uh, of this video uh, please leave comments subscribe um, reach out to me uh, and thank you for watching Thank you.